Hey guys, my name is Andrew Schmidt and I'm the Maker Bro and today I'm going to talk to you guys about ABS printing and how to get good, solid, reliable prints without all the hassle of warping or um, layer adhesion and issues such as that. So let's get into it and let me show you a couple things I've learned. Alright guys, so here we have some prints done in eSun ABS Plus and it's basically been a torture chest that I've been going through over the last couple days to figure out the best most rigid way to print ABS. So if we look here, starting way down with these guys, here's a few torture cubes that I started with, um, just experimenting with different temperatures. And so what you'll see is you'll see some ringing, you'll see some shrinkage on these guys. And what happens is a lot of people assume that um, you can't or you, you, can, you just print ABS at like 225 or 230 and that's good enough. Well it actually sometimes requires a lot more temperature than that and so here you'll see some really bad warping on 260 but when you get on these other ones this back one here I think it was 245 uh, this one's hollow but what, what's really important is you look at the extrusion on the top um, that's gonna be a big thing that's the bottom so the hot ones gonna have corner warping because the the product or the piece is shrinking as it's cooling um, and you're also gonna see see if I can get it here, um, extrusion issues. And it turns out the 245 was probably the best temperature to print at. So if you guys are gonna try something like eSun's uh, PLA Pro, or ABS Pro, my apologies, ABS Pro, um, you're definitely going to want to print it at 245, something warmer. Um, now, another important thing to look at when you're doing uh, an ABS print is the structure of the print. So all of these have failed in one way or another and there's a couple reasons why. So I started out printing it obviously too low of a temperature and then from there I went up in temperature but I was still having rigidity issues. I was having issues with the prints. Um, you can see on this guy here how it literally separated from a solid point. Um, it just it split apart and that was one of the first ones I was printing at 235. It was just too low of a temperature for the plastic and also too fast. You can see the ringing just doesn't look like a very good part. And then if we come over here, here's another one. I brought it up to 240, and once again, it just split apart when it was actually put under stress. Um, now, if, okay, so the part I really want to show you guys is this guy here. This one was printed at 255. It was still printed at, I believe, 0.3 resolution, 300 micron, but if you look on the inside here, um, it's got a lot better infill. This was printed at I believe like 70%. This part is very very solid. Um, it's still split however and why is that? Um, mostly because the infill pattern is wrong for the design. The infill pattern on this guy um, was rectilinear and with rectilinear prints you're going to experience a lot of issues. Into the details in here, try to get that on the camera, it's very rigid. The other thing that I did was I downloaded the new version of uh, the Prusa Special Edition version of Slicer, which we have here, Prusa Edition. Why did I do that? Because in this version, they give you a special uh, slicing type that you don't get on other slicers, and it's called Cubic. If you look through, you'll see how it, you end up with little triangles instead of little diamonds. So here you have little triangles, and if you were to go like rectilinear, you'd have uh, diamonds and squares. And so what that happens to turn out to is this is rectilinear. It's all over the place. It didn't get good layer bonding because it's a rounded part. The triangles bonded very well. They, bond they bonded strong, and I actually got this part stuck on the piece it was supposed to get put on because it was too small. I didn't accommodate for shrinkage and I had to cut it off with a Dremel. So, yeah, those are really important things you want to look at when you're printing ABS. Um, another thing you want to look at is uh, reprinted in, see if I can get it in the light here, reprinted in 150 micron with the new version of the Joseph Prusa Slicer and using their cubic infill at 50% is significantly more rigid and actually doing its job. So, Yes, it comes down to temperature and it also comes down to infill and speed and it's just a bunch of things that all pile up to having a solid, solid part. 
So just a couple things here to conclude. Um, when you're printing ABS, you're going to want to go and make yourself an ABS slurry, which is going to involve some acetone and some leftover ABS scraps stirred up and soaking um, for a little while, and then you're going to want to spread that on your print bed with a brush. Now, I really recommend you use some blue painter's tape so you can just peel this mess off when you're done. Um, but what happens is when the bed heats up, the acetone evaporates, and that will allow um, your print bed, when heated, to become a tacky um, ABS slightly ABS coated subs, uh, build platform. And so with that, you're gonna have a lot less warping issues because of that basically glue that you've put on your print bed. Um, I do recommend that you make your ABS juice or, juice or slurry in a ventilated place because it's not good for you to inhale acetone vapors. Um, and yeah, um, just make sure you have that good adhesion on your bed. Um, the next thing you're going to want to make sure you do, and you can see it in some of the prints I just showed you, was your first layer bond. That is very, very important because everything obviously after that is being held down with that bond. So with ABS, it's, it's so hot that it kind of, it can sag if there's not a really good bond. So you really want to make sure that the squish is just exactly the way it needs to be. On the one print I showed you a minute ago, um, the printer did not have like auto bed leveling. It was an old printer that I had in a box. And with that, um, the bed leveling was set for uh, 0.3 on the first layer. And that, then I switched down to 0.15 on the layer height, and I, that basically caused the entire print to kind of sag a little bit. So that was just another issue. Um, so just to recap, you guys want to make sure you have good bed adhesion with a slurry and some blue painter's tape, proper heat. You want to print at proper temperatures. Uh, standard ABS, you're looking at 235 Celsius. Um, ABS Plus, you could go all the way up to 260, depending on your printer and what you're making. And then also um, an enclosed bed or an enclosed printer, because this is a little void warping as well. And proper infill pattern. So when you're doing rectangles versus um, circles and things of that nature, um, in my case, I'm printing drone parts. I'll show you really quickly. This is the part that I showed you guys all the broken versions of here a minute ago in action. So on this uh, drone that I'm modeling, um, this is it's the arm coupler or socket, whatever you want to call it. And with that, it has to be very strong because the entire drone is going to hang on this particular part. So it's very important that I got it to where this piece wasn't going to split under pressure. And this drone could weigh up to five, six pounds. I want to make sure that this is not the part that fails. Um, I don't want any part to fail, but I want to make sure this particular part is not what fails. So with that, the proper infill I wanted on this was a cubic infill with the new Joseph Prusa slicer version and also a very fine print quality because the smaller the layers, the more squished together they are um, at that temperature, the higher chance of a layer bond you're going to have. If you've got 0.4 millimeter uh, layers, you, you're going to have ridges and gaps all the way across your print, whereas they're a lot smaller on these and the amount of heat allows them to act more as though glued together when you're printing them. So um, I hope I've given you guys some uh, relative information to how to print functional ABS prints. If you like this video, please let me know. Um, put it in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up. Um, hit subscribe if you actually think I'm throwing some good information out there. Um, if I'm not, let me know what you think, why, and how I can improve. Um, so I'm hoping to bring more content to this channel here very soon. Um, so just be patient with me. But until then, Maker Bro out.